Ancient Rome was the central hub to one of the largest and most powerful empires in history. The empire was known for adopting culture from places they conquered and passing its influence into new places as they went, especially with their design and their architecture. This influence has been passed across many generations and can still be seen in modern buildings all around the world to this day. One of the earliest examples of the famous Roman architecture style can be seen in the House of Menander in Pompeii. Constructed in the 3rd century BC, this house is one of the most authentic and well-preserved examples of the architecture and also the culture and wealth that is possessed by the leaders of the empire. The House of Menander was rumoured to be owned by a relative of Empress Popper and has been renovated multiple times over the years to add new features and trends such as the bathhouse or the servants quarter as the years went on. It is still viewed today as one of the most culturally rich houses in Pompeii and can provide an insight as to how the rich lived during their reign. However, not everybody lived like this, and in the Roman Forum, you can see how the regular people of Rome lived their lives. Built in 99 BC, the Roman Forum was used for multiple different things such as large public events, gladiatorial combats, or even just everyday market stalls, and has commonly been referred to as the most celebrated meeting place in the entire world. The Forum helps show us how day-to-day -day life in Rome was for the majority of people and how they would spend their free time. Moving over to the city of Nîmes in France, the Roman architectural style can still be seen in the buildings such as the Maison Carré, which is a Tuscan style temple with a spectacular design. The temple was constructed in the year 2 AD and has provided influence for many buildings around the world today. One major example of this would be the Virginia State Capitol building in USA, which was designed by Thomas Jefferson who admired the architecture of the temple. This proves that the empire has had a lasting effect, stretching thousands of years and still affects the world as we know it today. Also in Nîmes we can admire the Pont de Gard, which has been commonly referred to as the masterpiece of ancient architecture by many experts around the world. The Romans designed this aqueduct to transport water over the Garden River and into the city of Nîmes and this design is key to the expansion of the growth of the empire. This incredible structure can still be admired today and shows that the architectural design wasn't the only positive thing about the Roman buildings and a lot of these buildings were functional too. Another example of a functional base building would be the famed Roman bathhouses, which were used for public bathing rides up until the empire's decline in the 5th century AD. These baths were supplied via nearby lakes or rivers, however if this wasn't an option via aqueducts. These bathhouses were a staple of the Roman Empire and can even be found in the houses of the wealthy citizens such as the addition of the bathhouse in the house of Menander in the 1st century AD. Perhaps the most famous building constructed in the Roman Empire, the Colosseum still stands today and is considered one of the seven modern wonders of the world. The Colosseum was the largest amphitheatre at the time, holding up to 80,000 people, and we used multiple different events, such as gladiatorial combats and reenactments of famous battles. The Colosseum is an incredible example of architecture of Rome during the Empire and provides an insight as to what they did during their spare time. Just outside of the Colosseum stands the Ark of Titus, which is an honorific monument built by Emperor Domitian to commemorate his late brother Titus. The Ark was constructed in 81 AD to celebrate Titus and his victory over the Jewish rebellion in Judea. The Ark has provided a general model for many triumphal arches all around the world today, once again showing the influence that the Roman Empire has possessed and that passed through the other cultures and generations. In the year 126 AD, the Pantheon was constructed and is still one of the best preserved monuments of ancient Rome. It features a rotunda that includes a massive dome ceiling, which was the largest of its kind at the time. The Pantheon was designed and constructed as a temple to the gods originally around 25 BC. However, due to natural fires, the Pantheon was reconstructed under Emperor Hadrian, who was known for his design preferences. The building once again showcases some incredible architecture that can still stand tall today. Moving over to the city of Baalbek in Lebanon, you can see the Temple of the Bachir, which is considered an outstanding archaeological and artistic site of Imperial Roman architecture. In 1984, it was inscribed to the UNESCO World Heritage Site and is commonly referred to as the Temple of the Sun. Emperor Antonius Pius wanted the people of Baalbek to respect the temple, so constructed towers on the eastern side of the temple to make it look more familiar and recognisable to the people of Baalbek.
Moving back over to Rome, the Ark of Constantine is a triumphal arch dedicated to Emperor Constantine the Great. It is the largest triumphal arch standing at 21 meters tall and though it is dedicated to Emperor Constantine, much of the sculptural decorations consist of statues and decorations removed from early monuments dedicated to Trajan, Hadrian and Aurelius. This arc still stands tall today and is a great example of the long-lasting architecture built in the Roman Empire.